Thank you everybody for wearing your mask. It's 2020, it's time to grow some food. Welcome back to another one of our Hub Garden classes. Today we're gonna to be out in the Amberley Green Community Garden with our growing guru, Joshua Jones. He's gonna be talking to us about planning your fall garden and seed starting for that as well. Take it away, Josh. Hello everybody, I'm Joshua Jones. Uh, today we're gonna talk to you about fall planting uh, at the beginning. So we're gonna go through two different methods. We're gonna go through starting seeds indoors or maybe in a nice part shade area outside of your home. Uh, and we're also gonna talk to you about direct seeding. Uh, so as you see, we have a nice weed free uh, patch. This could have been where an early summer crop was that has slowed down. So we make space for it so we can do our fall succession cropping. Uh, fall planting is sometimes the easiest planting of the year. Um, with the spring, we're really battling frost in the beginning uh, and then we battle heat at the end. It's really nice that we can get our crops in. They start off in the heat, but they kind of finish out when they're producing their food in nice cool temperatures in the fall, uh, which really allows some, some premium vegetables. Uh, so first we're gonna do a, uh, we're gonna talk about seed starting in containers for inside uh, or the shade, uh, shady outside area. I've picked these cells. I like to go, this is about the size that I like. Uh, anything too big, it's really hard to keep wet. Anything too small and sometimes the seedling outgrows its container really quickly and you have to get it in ground maybe before you would like to. Uh, so typically when I am starting my seeds for my fall crop, crop dependent, but I will typically start them at the end of July or the very early of August. What I like to do is go and look at the maturity dates. Uh, so if it takes 45 days for say a beet to be mature, I go to the frost date at the end of the year and I try to work backwards to that uh, days to maturity and that tells me when I need to seed it. So here we go. Uh, I have just some nice seed starting mix. It looks like it is gonna be a blend of peat moss and vermiculite and perlite. You can do anything you want, you do anything you want to my garden. Is this yours? These, these four plots are mine. Well, we're doing a little demonstration for the Civic Garden Center here. Go for it. So we have a nice loose potting soil, uh, which is key. What I like to do, is get the pots nice and full almost overflowing and then i will i don't like to press hard on it but i'll just move the soil over so it's nice and level and then lastly i like to just barely pat it down maybe tap it on the ground or the table whatever you're working on and what that does is allows you to get a little bit of firmness which helps you hold water but it's not uh, super firm that your seed can't actually germinate uh, so once you have them le level they're slightly firm. You can tell they're not sinking too far into the cups. Uh, then we are going to get our seeds out. So right now is a great time for fall squashes. And so your butternut squashes, acorn squashes, it's a great time. Uh, and long, and um, spaghetti squash, another fall favorite. And the reason that is, is it becomes uh, nice and cool when they're putting on the fruit and it adds to the sweetness of your squash. So the rule of thumb when planting seeds inside a container or direct seeding is to do twice the depth uh, of the width. So you can see that this seed is about a quarter inch uh, to a half inch in width. So we're gonna to wanna to plant that anywhere between a half inch and one inch down in our container. So I just make a small divot and I drop it in there and we'll, you can do that six times here. And I, these plants like to run. Uh, so I always like to give myself a little extra. If I wanna plant two, I wanna plant, I wanna seed five or six. That way I can pick the best of what we have. So I'm just gonna drop the seeds in there 
And then what I don't necessarily love to do is to, I don't like to collapse the soil back on it. I like to add more soil to the top of it. And then again, really important to press, not too hard, but make sure it gets firm. Otherwise, when you water it, the soil goes right down out of the pot and it doesn't hold moisture and it doesn't allow that seed to germinate. And the last step to any seed starting is we have to give it a nice thorough watering. So notice how I'm not hitting it with this large stream, nice gentle watering, that way I'm not moving the soil around. I wanna get it nice and wet. And what I want to see happen is the water drop from the bottom. What that means that the water is completely soaked in. And if you're doing the container seed starting, it's really important to get these anywhere you can that the temperature is between say 70 and 85 degrees at the maximum. If you get more than 85 degrees, you'll get really spindly starts, which aren't um, as vigorous as if we had started them from about that 70 to 85 mark. Uh, so, so I like to say anything that's shaded at noon is great. If it gets some morning sun, some evening sun, that will typically keep it the right temperature. Or you can bring it inside for the first couple of days and put it on top of your refrigerator. Refrigerator typically runs a little warm and it's a great little heating mat for you. Uh, and then lastly, with the containers, it's important because we don't have any clay in our soil. It doesn't hold water very well. It's important to keep these things watered thoroughly. Almost every day I would say is probably appropriate, but you do want it to dry in between. So you don't, if it's wet when you touch it, you can give it another day. If it's dry, try to get it watered in the morning before that noon heat comes, uh, and that'll uh, really allow for good germination success. So now we're gonna talk about direct seeding. Um, direct seeding is nice because the temperatures typically this time of year are conducive to getting seeds to germinate right in the field. Uh, and root crop crops do not like to be transplanted. So I direct seed all of my root crops. Uh, with the squash, it's nice. Uh, they'll germinate in their pots and you can transplant them, but uh, very difficult to transplant root crops. So we're gonna go through the proper technique of germinating these seed starts uh, in your garden bed directly. Uh, so the same rule applies as we talked about is you want it to be uh, the, the, what I like to do is make a little furrow and that is your row uh, that you're gonna plant your seeds in. Um, so you'll, you'll hear about two different types of spacing on seed packets. You'll hear uh, between the plants and between the rows. Uh, typically though, when the seed packet says between the rows, a lot of times that's meant for walking, more for human, uh, less for the plant. So as long as you're able to reach, uh, you can separate them, your two rows by just three or four inches, especially with carrots and radishes. Uh, beets, I might wanna give a little bit more room because the foliage is a bit bigger. Uh, basically what we don't want to happen is them to be so crowded that their foliages are really competing with one another. Uh, so we have our row and the same rule applies. You want the depth to be about twice the width and you can see how tiny these seeds are. Uh, so what I like to do is I make a little furrow that way I know where I'm going and you can tell that's way deeper uh, than twice. So then what I'll do is just kind of fill it in just a little bit. Uh, that way there's some nice loose soil in your furrow and the great thing about direct seeding is you can sprinkle in uh, a heavier amount than you want to end up with. And then we go back later and thin the plants. So right now it would be impossible for me to put these one every three inches. So what I like to do uh, is to sprinkle them and you want to kind of move fast and you don't want to, you can backfill if you need, just pay attention and focus on where the seeds are dropping. dropping and just make, ensure that you're getting at least one uh, every inch or so. And a really nice technique that someone taught me is you can mix a little bit of sand with this. And then if you sprinkle the sand and the seeds, you don't get them so heavily seeded, so you're overcrowded. Uh, and then the same rule applies that we did in the containers is we need to cover them and firm them. 
So I lightly brush that furrow closed. And then with the back of my hand, I kind of go back through and pat it uh, almost like you're the burping a baby, about that kind of, uh, you don't want to press really hard, but you need to make sure you get it nice and firm. And so it, uh, carrots take a little bit longer than most seeds. They're typically about 14 days to germinate. Uh, but after that, what you'll do is when they get to be about an inch, you can thin uh, one, one every inch. And then when they get the tops get to be about two or three inches, then you can do your final spacing of one every three inches or so. So I like to thin in two separate bunches. Uh, that way, uh, if I thin too heavily at the beginning, if I have some die off, then I lose some end yields. So I like to leave them a little heavier at the beginning and then thin them to their final spacing when they're about two to three inches. Uh, and yeah, you can also toss those in your salads, anything that you're thinning. Uh, the baby uh, carrot tops are great, baby beets, baby, uh, really baby anything, toss those uh, radishes, toss those right into your salad greens, or you can just eat them as garden snacks. Uh, and then lastly, we uh, like just like we did with the others, you're going to want to water those in. Uh, same rule applies. You want to try to do as gentle of a stream as possible. And you'll notice I like to let this water pool. And when it takes about three seconds for it to disappear, that's when I know I've watered well enough. If you look over here at this dry area, I'll water about the same amount. And you see how quickly that disappeared? That means it's not wet enough. You gotta water it again. And then you see it takes a while for that water to all percolate down. Uh, that'll give you a pretty good indication whether or not you've watered enough. And so radishes will be the same way. Your beets are the same way. I always tell people with beets to keep in mind that uh, beet seeds are often clusters of seeds. So I try to get those a little, like more directly spaced uh, as the package says. So if it says one inch, I try to be very particular because typically you'll have two or three come up and it just makes more thinning work for you in the long run. Uh, I think that is everything about seed starting. So Josh, what are good plants to start this time of year? Uh, so anything that you grow in the spring, it uh, comes full circle and now you can grow it in the fall. So all of your root crops, your salad greens can come back into play. Uh, basically, if you're starting in the middle uh, of July to the middle of August, you have anything that's up to like a 60 to 70 day harvest uh, maturation time. Uh, so you can even plant, uh, you know, another summer squash if you really didn't get enough of the summer squash the first time around. Uh, but anything that you can grow in the spring is typically my rule of thumb. Uh, the broccolis that didn't do so well in the summer or in the spring crop because they started making their, their broccoli heads in the heat do much better in the fall. Cabbages that you don't get those nice tight heads in the spring because of the heat, you do much better in the fall because when that uh, plant is producing what we want to take from it, uh, it's nice and cool outside. Uh, and not only does it taste better, but it typically uh, is just a better quality product. Your yields will typically increase in the fall. Uh, I always tell people that starting a fall garden is much easier than starting a spring garden. Starting a fall garden is much easier than starting a spring garden. Starting a fall garden is much easier than starting a spring garden. So for novice gardeners and beginning gardeners, it's great to start off in the summer and the fall because you don't have those crazy weather issues that you have in the spring. Uh, and the plants just, they like it better in the fall. Um, we're going from long days to short days in the fall, which is a nice transition for them to get a lot of sun in the beginning, get nice, big, healthy. When we do it in the spring, the days are short and they get longer. So when the plant's trying to develop, it has short days, doesn't get to photosynthesize as much. Uh, and so then we have a smaller plant trying to put on a nice big fruit uh, and it's a little bit more difficult for the plant. So. Uh, the fall crops, uh, all the spring crops do much better in the fall. All your roots are great. Uh, it's a great time to plant your, uh, another set of kales, cabbages, collards. Uh, yeah, spinach. spinach. Yeah, spinach hates the heat. Uh, lettuce hates the heat. Really gonna uh, have a lot of success in the fall if you try. It's 2020, time to grow your own food.